Good morning, everyone. We will get started in about two minutes. Good morning, everyone. Uh, happy Friday. Welcome to the November edition of the System uh, Leader Monthly Call. I hope you're all enjoying the uh, cooler weather uh, that we're experiencing today. I certainly know that I did. Uh, a lot better about it. Yeah. So uh, thank you for being on the call. Uh, one uh, of the, I'm in the car. Uh, hey, Beth, Beth, I believe you are not muted. Um, wanted to make one uh, announcement just prior to uh, everyone going into the meeting agenda, and that is that November is uh, Family Engagement Month. Uh, the governor has declared November here in the state of Louisiana uh, as Family Engagement Month. Uh, that is uh, aligned to the National uh, Family Engagement Month. And one of the things I know over the last couple of years is that certainly families have had to make adjustments. Uh, certainly you have had to find new ways to communicate with families. Uh, and I really think that that you and, and, and your families have done a really good job of working together uh, over the last couple of years uh, through uh, all of the challenges that, that we faced. I, I think it is one of the successes. And I think you found new and creative ways to communicate with your families, too, that's been helpful. Uh, and we're trying to, to lean in and support that as much as we can. Uh, certainly, uh, we want parent engagement. Uh, it, you know, there's, there's really uh, no easy way to uh, get parent engagement sometimes whenever we're uh, serving in, 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 in places where we feel like we don't have enough parent engagement and it's just hard work uh, and it's just going to take new and, and creative ways to, to get that. So just want to call out that the governor has proclaimed in the state of Louisiana November as Family Engagement Month. And then we will uh, move over to our, our Dr. Timmel and operations. Good morning and happy Fall Friday. This is one of my favorite Fridays of the month because I get to spend this time with you all and just provide updates on what's happening with the Office of Operations. Just to um, include a little bit more information about the Be Engaged initiative in relation to uh, this month being declared as Family Engagement Month, you all have um, heard many opportunities or you've had many opportunities just to learn a little bit more about the Be Engaged initiative that we've launched here at the department. In April of last year, we had about 26,000 parents respond to our family engagement survey. And with that, we were able to um, 
engage with parents around some of their desires and needs. And what we heard overwhelmingly, not only from the survey, but from several focus groups that we uh, managed through many survey opportunities and engagement opportunities where families wanted to not only receive information, but they wanted more involvement and they also wanted to move from involvement to engagement. And so since then we've launched just a, an initiative to support and respond to our parents. So as we celebrate and acknowledge Family Engagement Month um, in conjunction with the governor's proclamation, here are the opportunities and the ways in which you can partner with the Department of Education just to expand and enhance the things that you are doing. So this month in our newsletter, we are going to release LPD, PBS, um, PSA videos. And so you will have access to videos that you can share just to again, spread the word and to bring as our first bullet says, awareness to the importance of engagement in education, not only from our parents, from families, as well as our communities. And we've also partnered to build structures and partnerships that ignite engagement. PIMS Point is one of those structures that we've invested in. Again, it is not mandatory for you to use PIMS Point, but it is an enhancement for you to use things that you are already doing within your system. Last night, spending time with my daughter, I think I signed several documents for her to get bonus points to um, indicate that she's been reading 20 minutes a night. And so again, we always look for ways to strengthen the communication between home and school and families and our children. And so please continue to do what you are doing, but also lean on the department for additional supports and resources that we are providing um, in order to support your efforts. Again, we know that with title dollars, it is mandatory for us to engage our parents, and we are just looking for ways to enhance, to support, and provide guidance around the work that you're doing. So let's continue to be engaged. School system planning. Last Friday, around this time, I was in a room with uh, several of our federal program directors, chief financial officers, talking about school system planning. I just want to say great job to all of our fiscal federal program leaders within our systems. We know that you have been inundated with dollars to do great things for kids, and you all have really done a great job with school system planning. Again, I just wanna bring before you the opportunities that we continue to have around using incentive dollars. And so Achieve Incentive Round 2 application and the Super App are now live in EGMS. Our Incentive Round 2 application will be due December 16th. Our Super App application will be due February 4th. As I explained in my meeting last week with some of our fiscal leaders throughout the state, we listen to our stakeholders. We try to make this process as, um, as amenable and as palatable for our school systems as possible. And so we have adjusted timelines. We have adjusted a few processes. And if you need more information around those adjustments and timelines and processes and resources, please go to our school improvement library, look for the school system planning resources. We have a link here and you can look for the November launch deck and recording our school system planning guide. And then we have also released our our strategic planning uh, and priorities-based workbook. We have received a lot of feedback from systems. If you are looking for a tool that will help you plan multi-year, that document is a workbook that you should definitely invest some time in, in uh, reviewing. And so again, thank you so much for being just amenable and flexible as we've continued to try to strengthen our supporting resources around the things that you need most. So at this time, I will turn it, I think I have one more slide that just reviews our operations monthly calls. You see the dates, you have the links before you, you can always refer, refer to this resource just to stay in tune and stay in touch with the information that we have for you. I'll turn it over now to Thomas Lambert, our Assistant Superintendent for Assessments, Accountability and Analytics. Thank you, Thomas. Thanks, Dr. Temple. Um, so on the next slide, 
you will see real quick updates on Edlink collection timelines. Um, we are doing really well on that October 1 collection. Uh, November 19th is the deadline this year. Uh, we did make that deadline a little bit further out uh, to help support districts as they transition to this new system. Um, you know this is critical for MFP IDEA funding. Um, it's really important this is accurate. It has a lot of implications. Uh, December 3rd will be the October 1 uh, staff collection, uh, which is critical for MFP pay raise allocations, workforce reporting. And then lastly, class schedules, which is due, which are due uh, January 7th. Uh, that has implications on funding as well, as well as interests and opportunities. Uh, if you have questions around EdLink, uh, reach out to edlink360 at la.gov. Um, or if you, uh, as a, a superintendent or system leader, um, are having issues with, with EdLink and you want to talk to somebody, feel free to send me an email directly, uh, thomas.lambert at la.gov. Always happy to be helpful. Next slide. Simulated school performance scores uh, will be released uh, late this year. Uh, we do not have that finalized date, but as in the past, uh, the department will communicate at least two weeks in advance of the release uh, to system leaders via the newsletter, what our timeline looks like, um, and we will follow a, a pretty standardized briefing process to make sure that you are uh, very aware of those simulated results um, as you have been in the past uh, before we post those publicly. If you have any questions, uh, want to talk about that, reach out to accountability at la.gov. Next slide. Uh, this slide just kind of walks through uh, the November calls. We have our data coordinator webinar on the 4th um, and our assessment and accountability monthly call on the 16th. And those are my slides. And I'm handing it over to Assistant Superintendent Ken Bradford. Thank you, Thomas. Good morning, everyone. Ken Bradford, Assistant Superintendent with the Office of Career and College Readiness. Um, the first thing today that, that we'll talk about is the Jumpstart Convention and the Child Welfare and Attendance Summit. Uh, it'll be, this will be the first time in, in, in two years that we've been able to meet face-to-face -face down here at the Raising Canes River Center in Baton Rouge. And the day we're adding to the day this year, we're adding a child welfare and attendance summit. So what we've done is we have approximately 1200 seats and the Jumpstart Convention will, will start the day off and we will discuss uh, Jumpstart 1.0, Jumpstart 2.0 pathways. We'll talk about our new fast forward high school experience option. And then we'll talk about additional high school experiences. And so we really look forward to seeing this. Uh, this, is, this is for counselors, for principals, for CTE supervisors, for school system superintendents to attend. What we've also done this year is we are adding a, a component to that, our Child Welfare and Attendance Summit. And we have reserved enough seats for every school system some child welfare and attendance officer to, to come and participate with us. And we'll have a dedicated track of sessions for them. And we'll discuss student enrollments, student engagement, and student encouragement. Uh, there, both of these links here on this slide take you to the registration page. There is no cost associated coming and, and joining us for the day. So really look forward to having you there with us. And if you have any clarifying questions, you can always email us at jumpstart at la.gov. My second item today is around the, the FAFSA form, the free application for student, student aid. Uh, this particular cycle opened up on October 1st. It's best to complete this early. And we just want to reiterate to school systems that the department staff here is, is here to support you. Uh, you can make a request if you have a FAFSA day, if you have a FAFSA night. We are willing to come out there and provide you some on-site support during those activities, and you can start now. So reach out to us if you're having a FAFSA day, FAFSA night, FAFSA activity, and we'll come out and we'll assist you. Just as a reminder, financial aid planning is a graduation requirement. So the sooner you can provide your students this opportunity, the sooner you're gonna get them closer to meeting all of their graduation requirements. Again, for that support, reach out to us at ldefinancialaid at la.gov. And finally, a reminder, uh, when our monthly calls are, uh, the next call, our next monthly call is November the 18th at 3 p.m. And then our next office hours will be December 2nd at 3 p.m. At this time, I'll turn it over to our interim Equity, Inclusion, and Opportunities Assistant Superintendent, Max Day. 
Excellent. Thank you, Ken. Um, and good morning, uh, leaders. It is great to be here with you guys this morning. Um, go ahead and go on to the next slide, please. Okay. Uh, again, I we are not a completely broken record here in this office. Uh, this is just a partnership and an initiative that we believe really strongly in. So we are going to go through this again with you guys today. Um, but we're here to talk about the Oshner partnership that we have to offer our teachers and our educators four free virtual teletherapy visits from anywhere that can um, work along with their schedule. This opportunity is still available for all of our educators. It's available right now. Uh, we originally planned for, like I said, 166,000 people across the state to be able to take advantage of this. Um, we'll go through the, in, the data in a second. Um, but again, I just want to reiterate, this is an opportunity for our educators to receive a service that I truly believe will allow them to be th their most effective selves in the classroom, but then also at the, at, in their home and the rest of their lives. Uh, we have to be well to do well, and this is an opportunity for us to do that. So looking at this data, um, if you guys recall last time um, at our, uh, I guess it would have been our October meeting, we presented data through September. Uh, the new data is what you see in this yellow box. Um, and I, if you recall, I asked you last time out of kind of a personal ask that you guys would go back to your schools and your systems and push this program or at least help people know that it is available. Uh, and prior to us actually having this discussion in October, you guys can see uh, the most adoption of this program that we had was in the summer, like June and July over here, where we had our 25, two weeks of 25 folks in a row completing visits. Um, but just since we were able to talk last October or last month, uh, 73 additional visits have happened. That's 24% of all of the visits that have happened since we started this initiative. And all, you know, I'm sure that you guys went out and you, you pushed your folks uh, and ask them to take part in this uh, initiative. Uh, but really that was just one ask from me. So I'm really excited to see how we can take this and continue to push this program and continue to work together in partnership to make sure that we can get this really vital resource to our educators. Next slide, please. Here's the map. Uh, I love this visual because I think it can tell you guys kind of is my system participating. Uh, because of patient confidentiality and privacy, we can't really drill down much farther than this. But if you look at these two maps, the one on the left shows where we were uh, the Sunday before the last leaders call. The one on the right shows where we were as of Halloween. Um, just not to be a downer, but the green actually only represents one person uh, jumping in and taking advantage of this program. But listen, I would rather have this whole state green than gray. Uh, I am very proud of the fact that we are seeing kind of bridges uh, between different locales across the state, especially up here in northern Louisiana. Um, our Lake Charles friends and Lafayette leaders are really pushing this. And then over here in our DeSoto and Sabine parishes, we're seeing some movement. Um, and so again, this is just me coming back to you guys saying, I believe that this is a vitally important program. I think our teachers have been pushed to their limit for a couple of years now. Um, and this is a way that's going to provide some support and just get them what they need, honestly. And I believe in the power of this program. And so I'm asking you guys again, please take this information that you see on this slide here. This walks you through exactly what you need to do and exactly what your people need to do to take advantage of this opportunity. The ask here is that you guys would take this information back and continue to push uh, this out to your systems. One thing I do want to call out, you'll see at the very bottom of this slide, it says if you have questions, please contact Byron Hurst at la.gov. Dr. Byron Hurst has joined our team. He is coming to us most recently from Tangipahoa Parish, uh, where he was leading their student well-being work there. We are very excited to have him here on our team. He will become our point person here for our LDOE and Oshner partnership. Um, very excited for you all to meet him, but please reach out to him with any questions in the meantime. Next slide. You guys will have the opportunity to connect with Dr. Hurst and the entire student well-being team at this November 17th call at 3 p.m. Uh, we will be doing some outreach. Dr. Hurst specifically will be doing some outreach about this uh, to local superintendents. Uh, but please hold this time. We really want to make sure that you have the opportunity to connect with our team and to see what we can do to continue to push our Oshner initiative forward. We also have our non-public schools call November 17th at 2 p.m. And then the charter calls that we host every month, we are gonna pause those in November and we will resume those in December um, and the dates will remain the same, uh, but we will advertise those during our December call. 
Uh, and so with that, I am going to turn it over to Dr. Keith Leger for legislative and policy support. Thanks. Hey, thanks, Max. Um, our team is, uh, well, happy Friday, uh, folks. Um, our team is getting ready for the December Bessie meeting as well as the upcoming legislative session uh, in March of, of 2022. Um, go ahead and roll to the next slide, please. Our two support calls uh, are November 15th and December 13th, both at 10 a.m. At this point, I'll turn it over to my good friend, Trey Falls. Thank you, Dr. Lachey. And let me <clears throat> just say to Dr. Lachey, happy birthday. Um, we're all wishing you a great Friday and a weekend as well. Thank you all for being on the call. We just have one quick slide. If you'll go to it for us, please. And it's just a reminder for everyone, if you have a teacher or a principal that is a state level applicant, I would encourage you to have them participate. It's optional, but I would encourage you to have them participate in this informational webinar. Lots of good information for all the candidates and it will help them with their application and the process. So please encourage them to take advantage of that. You can see it's Tuesday, November 6th, at 4.30 p.m. Everybody have a good Friday and a weekend. I'll turn it over to Dr. Jenna Chesson, Teaching and Learning. Thank you, Mr. Falls. Good morning, everyone. Have a few updates this morning from the Office of Teaching and Learning. We'll start with early childhood. I wanted to take a brief moment this morning to make sure that everyone on this call is aware that in the coming weeks, we'll be updating the early childhood performance profiles. These include a performance score and rating that allow access to important resources through the school readiness tax credits for many families and providers. In order to make sure that those who support our students continue to have access to those resources, those school readiness tax credits, we will publish an update to performance scores and ratings. However, this update will reflect the flexibilities that were approved back in April by Bessie. The department will compare results from the 2020-2021 school year to results published last fall, and we will update scores only if this year's results are higher. We anticipate that this update will happen by mid-November, and we wanted to just take a moment today to preview this for you as system leaders in case you receive any questions about it. If you have any additional questions, you can feel free to contact earlychildhood at la.gov. Next up, we have some really good news. We're excited to announce that the funding for undergraduate year-long residents has increased from $1,000 to $1,800. This increase will go into effect for this school year. School systems should have submitted their mentor and resident data already via the FTP on October 31st. There's no additional information that is needed from school systems to receive this increased amount. We already have what we need from you and the eligibility requirements do remain the same. The mentor stipend will still be at that $1,000 rate. If you have any questions, feel free to contact believe and prepare at la.gov. We also have an important update this morning about 2020, 2021 school leader evaluation scores. So this is last year's school leader SLTs. Due to the federal waiver of SPS scores traditionally used for leader student learning targets, systems now have the following options for completing the student growth portion of the 2020-2021 leader SLTs. The first option is in some cases, leaders did not use SPS scores as one of their SLTs, so at that point, they are not impacted by the federal waiver of the SPS scores and will enter evaluations as planned. If leaders had one SLT that was based on SPS scores and one based on an alternate measure, the alternate SLT should be duplicated for a final student growth score. The third situation is if school systems used only SPS for SLTs, the observation score will comprise the sum total of the evaluation score as student growth scores are unavailable for use. If you have any questions about finalizing and closing out your school leader evaluation scores, feel free to contact compass at la.gov with any questions. 
As many of you know, we are knee deep in our social studies standards review process right now, and they are currently under review. We have launched an online social studies standards comment form. This is a public portal that can be accessed via the link here in this deck or in our standards review committee library on our website. This form allows everyone in the public an opportunity to share their feedback on every single social studies standard. Please share this link with teachers, with families. You yourselves use this link. Um, encourage everyone to provide feedback on the standards. Public comment will be presented to Bessie in December and Bessie will decide on approval of the standards in January. You can reach out to classroom support toolbox at la.gov with any questions about our social studies standards review process. And on the slide now, you see our upcoming teaching and learning monthly calls. Wanted to let everyone know that next Friday we have our teaching and learning roundtable call and we will be digging deep into balanced calendar options. So if you have questions or ideas or would like to learn more about what it might look like to adopt a balanced calendar, please join us for our teaching and learning roundtable next Friday at 11 a.m. We also have our preparation providers monthly call coming up as well as our academic content and educator development monthly call. And that's a great call to listen to to dive really deeply into curriculum and instruction professional development. So we invite you all to join those upcoming calls. And with that, I will turn it back over to Dr. Timmel. Good morning again, all. We have been manning the chat just to see if we've had any questions come in. And at this time, we do not have any questions. We will um, pause to see if within the last second or so, if we've had questions come in. I think a few questions that we've had direct message to various assistant superintendents, they've been able to answer those um, questions throughout, throughout the call. So at this time we can go to the next slide. So thank you for joining our call today. As always, there are multiple ways in which you all can reach out to us and get additional information. Um, LDOE weekly newsletter, you had the school system support calendar throughout the deck today. There were multiple slides which communicated our individual office hours. So make sure you um, look in our newsletter. We have a um, an entire chart that gives you those dates so that you can ensure that the appropriate and the specific audience attend those, um, those specific uh, calls. So also stay close to our Louisiana Believes homepage. We always have current and up-to-date information posted there for helpful links, go to our school improvement library and also utilize our support toolboxes. We pray that you all have a great weekend. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. And again, thank you for joining our call today.